Hey guys, and welcome back to you, Nico Dev. In the last video, we talked about Firebase rules, and we looked into the variables you can use in order to make your rules as secure as possible. This is going to be the part two, where we talk about the validate rule, the index on rule, if you can call it that, and also how to publish rules from a REST API. If you haven't watched part one, I strongly suggest you to do so, or if you are already confident with rules and just need clarification on this part, then you can keep watching, no problem. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe and also leave a like if you want to see more content like this, because it would support me and the channel quite a lot. Alright, let's begin. Now, before starting, I need to remind you about one thing which is really important to this next bit, which is the rule cascade. If you don't know what the rule cascade is, let me just throw a simple example right here. We call this user1, and right here we will put true, okay? Alright, so you would think that the request on users user1 will not go through, but it will actually go through because this read right here is true. We allowed access to the entire branch, so then this value right here is getting ignored. Now the same goes also for writing rules naturally, so if I do write true, and right here we do write false, we are going to get the exact same result. Meaning that if we do a write request to the same location, and we run it, we are still gonna get true even if write was false. Now one thing that is interesting though, is that this is not true for the validate. So if we actually, instead of using write, we use validate, and we use it also right here, but we have to set it to false, and we do publish, now you would expect to validate to also go through, but it's not. So this is something particular about validate, is that it doesn't follow the rules cascade. Meaning that these two values are not an OR gate, but they are an AND gate, if you can call them that. In fact, in the opposite scenario where this is false and this is true, we are still not going to get true. Now you might be confused on va what validate actually is. And we can test out that if we put the reading to true, for example, and we do a read request, and we run, as you can see, everything will work smoothly. So validate is only called when there is a written request, or when you are setting some data. Now validate is actually the same as write, okay? It does the exact same thing, just that it doesn't have this rules cascade property. And also, it will only be checked once write is available. So naturally, if you cannot write to the database, then it doesn't need to worry about validate, because you cannot write at all. So why is validate useful? As the name suggests, validate can actually, you know, enforce some style and some formatting to the data. So I don't know, let's say that, um, let's try to do an example for this, okay? We're gonna remove this user because we don't need it, okay? Now, we need to actually push a user to this database, okay? Um, our client can push any user he wants, but this user needs to have a nickname uh, and some age, okay? If you don't have these two attributes, the database will not work properly. So when you push your data, you need to specifically have these two attributes. So the reading is going to be always true, the writing is gonna be always true, we don't care. But right here in the validate, we can actually use a variable that we talked about in part one, which is new data, which is gonna give you a snapshot of the data we want to insert. And actually, now that I think about it, we only want to insert data, so we can also remove read, because, you know, the client doesn't need to read any data, it just needs to send it. Alright, so we can check if the new data has a child, which is nickname, and if the new... Yeah, and we can do end if the new data has a child, which is age, okay? Oh yeah, I always forget the quotation marks, okay? When you're doing an expression, you need the quotation marks, because it's actually telling that this is going to be some JavaScript. Yes, and I did yet another mistake, wow. Okay, so we are retrieving the children of the new data, but we actually need to check if it exists. So I have to do exists, and also exists, there you go. And as you can see, if we do a normal request, it's going to get denied. But if instead of key and value right here, I actually put some data, like nickname and um, age, we said, there we go, uh, I can put a number, I guess, and we run it, it's still not going to work. Oh yeah, because we're posting to user1. We only want to post inside the users, because this is where we defined our thingy thing. 
and as you can see it will be allowed and now we need to test again for no data or actually can we send null as a data i'm just wondering oh simulation could not run okay that's interesting okay let's maybe try to remove the oh my gosh i'm messing up everything let's try to remove the age and run and as you can see it doesn't work all right before moving on to the next thing i know a lot of you people maybe have been wondering and have been like why is there a notification here what does this notification mean what is is alert and you know i actually wanted to show you because this is like because this is like a little bit meta <laughs> your project real-time database has insecure rules so this is actually a game that i made and you can see how uh, even I can mess up and forget adding rules to my projects. Oh yes, really secure rules, Nico. Well done, you are really the best, you are so good at securing rules. Okay, this is probably an old version of the game, this is not the one released, I hope. Okay, we talked about the validate, now let's talk about indexing our data. Actually, I wanted to say one more thing about the validate, is that because it doesn't cascade like the others, uh, you could have different validations for different branches so in the users you need to have a user which has a nickname and an age but if we actually go into a default user we could say so we can use the uh, character right here which is user okay we can use this uh, wildcard variable then right here we can put some other conditions like uh, i don't know maybe not inside the user but inside the nickname okay nickname and the nickname actually doesn't have to be a string uh, but it has to be divided into full name and uh, I, I don't know, full name and last name, something like that. So right here we could put another validate that is doing that. So these two validates are going to stack and both of them need to be true in order for the request to go through. So you know, this is why there is no rules cascade on the validate if you were wondering. Okay, so as of right now, we covered all of the rules. We covered the validate, the write and the read. Now we actually have something left to cover, which is the index on. But the thing about the index on is that it's not actually a rule. So it's not really defining anything. We don't need the rules playground for this. What this is basically doing is optimizing our database. It's a little bit confusing that it's set in our database rules, but I guess it's a good place to, you know, put it. You know, it's pretty convenient. Now basically what this does is imagine that you have, or actually I'm just gonna use the example from the documentation so you know we can both enjoy it. Okay so in the documentation there was this data set. Now these are not actually rules, this is the actual data. I'm just putting it here for convenience. Alright so basically we have in the data different types of dinosaurs with different attributes like height, length and weight. Now let's say that when our client wants to get these attributes, it wants to sort them. Sometimes we might want to sort them by height, sometimes we might want to sort them by length, but never by weight, okay? We will never sort them by weight because we just don't need them, okay? We don't do any discrimination on weight. Okay, that, that was a dumb one. But basically, we are always sorting by length or by height, never by weight. Now, Firebase doesn't know this, but we could actually tell him exactly what I told you, so basically that we are never sorting by weight, so that Firebase can actually optimize the way that the data is ordered, so that we get quicker queries. And the way you do it is basically with this rule. So inside the dinosaur branch, okay, we are basically telling Firebase that we are always going to be indexing on, so we are only always going to be ordering by height and by length but never by weight. With this information, Firebase will optimize the way that the data is stored and will retrieve you a faster query. So basically the formatting is index on and then whatever the children of that data are that you want to optimize for. Now, if the data doesn't have any children, but it's just a value, you can actually put right here just dot value, dot value, yes. And I will show you an example of that, still taken from the docs. Let's say that all of the dinosaurs have different scores and as you can see they have a value which is the score and let's say that we want to sort the data by the score so we can do a scoreboard so firebase can optimize for this ordering and if we go back to our code when we put this to scores this will do exactly that so inside the scores branch every single child will be indexed on its value all right and that's all i have to say about that Okay, I think we are actually done with the rules themselves, now let's learn how to set them and retrieve them remotely. We can just go on the docs where it tells us exactly how to do this. We can do this by terminal too, meaning by just doing a CURL request to a website. 
And if we do a put request and as the data we put our rules, so as you can see this is just a JSON, and we put it to this uh, website, we are just gonna push our rules. And in the same way, if we do a get request, we are gonna get our rules back. Now, as you can see right here, we do have to set the access token though. And the reason why we have to do this is so that, you know, only the owner of the project can set rules and the other users cannot set them because then it would be dumb. So how do we actually obtain this access token? Okay, I read some more about it so you don't have to do it yourself. So basically, what you need to do is go to the project settings uh, from here, service accounts, and then you can generate a new access token. There, generate new private key. And this will basically give you a file and with this file you can actually okay give me a sec let me close this with this file this is actually a test project i know he told me to keep it secret but whatever uh we are gonna get a private key and this key can be exchanged with a token i think firebase can actually automatically do this but i actually just want to show you this in action i'm actually in my uh file manager right here okay i'm just gonna open a terminal and i'm gonna do firebase in it if I can actually spell, there you go. And this is actually going to instantiate a Firebase project right here on this uh, uh, folder. You might actually have to download the Firebase command in order to run this. But as you can see, I have a lot of things that I can um, actually put here, which are the functions from uh, Cloud Functions. And I will actually do a tutorial on Cloud Function. It's just waiting to happen. It's going to be my next thing. But for today, we just need to worry about the database. So deploy Firebase real-time database rules. And if we press enter, uh, we can use an existing project. And I selected the tutorial project. And then what files should be used for database rules? It can just be the default one. And there we go. So now right here, as you can see, we have database.rules. And we can just open this file with anything we want. We can write the database rules. Oh, as you can see, it already retrieved uh, the rules from the database, which were the last one we set. And we can update them. So maybe make this a read and we make this true. There you go. Oh, not like that. Okay. And then we can just go here back in our terminal and do Firebase deploy. And this is going to basically deploy our rules and update them into the thingy thing, into Firebase. Now you don't need to actually do this, this is just for simplicity, but if you have that JSON that I showed you uh, before, you can make this work with just your terminal. But yeah, this just does it all automatically, which is, you know, better for me. Alright, so now let's actually go into the rules, uh, where are them, database, rules, and they should actually be updated. Boom, there you go, they are updated, read is true. I will link you in the description this page that will talk about how to authenticate with an access token in case you want to do it, uh, you know, uh, via terminal or even, you know, via anything you want by just a REST request. But yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed even part 2 of this tutorial video. Next up I will talk about cloud functions or maybe next video will be on machine learning. I'm kinda, you know, going through uh, one episode or the other of this two series so you can look forward for any new episodes on that. If you enjoy the content that you are seeing on this channel, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new. And yeah, thank you ever so much for watching, hope you learned something new today, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. See ya!